As all of us wait impatiently for SN8 to tell us just how close we are to this moment becoming a reality, there is another reality that few of us, including myself, are really willing to face. For all of the Starship's innovation and reusability, in spite of the fact that it offers the opportunity to transport people and cargo into low Earth orbit or across the solar system for cheaper than anything that's come before it, by far, there is one thing that we all have to keep in mind. And that is, no matter how much we might love this rocket, and no matter how much we might hate this rocket, they both operate under the same principle, using a chemical reaction to transport cargo and people into low Earth orbit and across the solar system. When it comes right down to it, there really isn't much of a difference. The only thing that makes the Starship different is reusability, whereas the antiquated SLS is completely disposable. But other than that, they're using the same principle to drive their ships. Now I've talked about alternate forms of propulsion on this channel, things like fusion and antimatter and things like that. But all of those forms of propulsion are way on the horizon. However, there's something else that's a hell of a lot closer. And this is a form of nuclear rocket which was used or supposed to be used by the Copernicus B, a vessel that is not way on the horizon but actually was supposed to take us to Mars by 2017. And the reason this ship that would have solved so many problems was cancelled was not because we didn't have the engineering or the technology, but simply because somebody decided it was too expensive. As a matter of fact, we had the technology back in the 1970s. Welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. I really didn't intend for things to go this way with three straight episodes essentially being about the same thing. Getting the human species to Mars and all the difficulties involved with it. But in the end, with some of the more recent news that I've been reading, it's kind of ended up that way. I think it's very important that we start talking about these sorts of issues simply because NASA's intentions are to move forward with a different type of propulsion when it comes to transporting humans and cargo to Mars. And since they are doing it, I think SpaceX is also should be very interested in the same thing. Because when it comes right down to it, we are moving backwards in many regards when it comes to our future mission plans. The space shuttle was a mostly reusable vehicle, and now the SLS is a completely disposable vehicle, and the Starship, although being completely reusable, is still using the same kind of technology the same kind of chemical propulsion that we've been using forever. And what if I were to tell you that there is an alternate form of propulsion that's not only on the boards but ready for testing by 2024 that could get the Starship to Mars in half the time that is currently being planned, or as an alternative, decelerate the Starship to a degree to where it could enter Martian orbit instead of plunging directly into the atmosphere 
and therefore the starship could enter the Martian atmosphere of a time of their choosing rather than hoping that there are favorable conditions upon arrival. Well, that type of propulsion does indeed exist or will exist soon, and it is called nuclear thermal propulsion, as I think a lot of you have guessed. I did make a video about this, but it was quite some time ago, and I think that it's time for an update, especially since a lot of you folks did not see that old video. So, in any event, what's nuclear thermal propulsion? What's it all about? Why is it so close to being ready to be used in, for practical purposes? Well, the reason we are so close is because we have this technology pretty much ready to go way back in the 1970s. And I'm going to tell you more about that right now. Back in August of 2017, NASA signed a contract with a company called BWXT to design a reactor suitable for nuclear thermal propulsion, as if this was some kind of brand new technology. But frankly, it isn't. If the designers of the Saturn V had gotten their way, they would have used that rocket to go to Mars, putting a nuclear thermal engine in the top stage. The principle of the engine is very straightforward, to superheat hydrogen and drive it out the nozzle at a very high rate of speed, about twice as fast as a traditional chemical rocket. The faster your propellant moves out the nozzle, the more efficient the rocket and therefore the longer your propellant lasts. And by the way, the reason you're seeing all of this old footage is because no less than 22 major tests of this engine were carried out until the program was canceled in 1972. It was environmental concerns mostly, because the engine had to use highly enriched uranium instead of low enriched uranium, which is the focus right now. But what happened in the half century that went by before we started trying again? Well, essentially nothing, because we started concentrating on low Earth orbit. And by the way, so did the Russians who were working on a similar project. And to be blunt, the decision to kill this project? Absolutely idiotic because nuclear thermal propulsion could drive a ship to the red planet in as little as three months instead of six. Less time in microgravity, less time exposed to radiation and cosmic rays, plus a lot of other advantages which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Plus, you can bring nuclear power to a Martian colony, providing an excellent alternative to solar power in case there's a dust storm that blocks out the light from your solar panels. Had we pressed on with this technology and used the Saturn V for what it was intended, we would not only have a base on Mars by now at the very least, but we would also be pursuing even further targets like Saturn as you're seeing here. But instead, we're still stuck in low Earth orbit. So let's look at another nuclear thermal concept called the Arthur C. Clarke. It consists of a truss system like the ISS, liquid hydrogen fuel tanks, and nuclear thermal propulsion with three thrusters with 25,000 pounds worth of thrust and four additional liquid hydrogen drop tanks to get to Mars in the first place. And the rotating crew modules are at the front providing protection from radiation and also a little bit of artificial gravity. So all of this is well and good, but how the hell do you make it work with the Starship? Well, the answer to that question is, not a lot actually needs to change. The Super Heavy, first of all, doesn't really change at all because you can't use nuclear engines to take off on the planet. First of all, it would be hazardous, and secondly, nuclear engines provide sort of a slow burn. Not enough thrust to take off from Earth with its immense gravity, but enough to keep a rocket going for a much longer period of time, achieving greater speed over a longer period. 
the Starship itself would also require chemical engines in order to achieve low Earth orbit. But once it did that, this is where the changes take place. Like the Arthur C. Clarke, the Starship would also be equipped with three engines, nuclear thermal with liquid hydrogen fuel tanks instead of methalox. While the Super Heavy goes back down to get a tanker, the Super Heavy would actually be retrieving a tanker loaded with liquid hydrogen fuel rather than methalox. So if you repeated this process half a dozen times as Elon has planned right now, then you would actually have the equivalent of a dozen refuelings with methalox, as the nuclear thermal engines are going to be twice as efficient. Now with efficiency also comes flexibility because you could use this extra fuel or extra efficiency in order to get to Mars within about a three month time frame as I said before or you could keep the fuel in reserve to decelerate so that you could enter Martian orbit at your leisure rather than having to plunge directly into the atmosphere to slow down. Now using liquid hydrogen fuel also offers another type of flexibility. Instead of going directly to Mars, you could actually go to a fuel depot in lunar orbit. And the reason for this is, although the moon may not have what's necessary to manufacture methalox fuel, it certainly has plenty of hydrogen in the form of frozen water. Therefore, you could completely refuel your nuclear thermal tanks at the moon before you made the rest of your journey to Mars, having completely full tanks and all the flexibility that goes with that. And what about radiation from the reactor on the trip over? Well, remember that the Starship is going to be exposed to radiation and cosmic rays in interplanetary flight anyway, so it's going to need protection from radiation regardless. A little extra protection for the reactor really would be no big deal. Submariners serve on nuclear submarines for years without glowing in the dark. So during its shorter journey, the Starship would have extra fuel to decelerate into a controlled orbit around Mars, free to make entry into the atmosphere whenever they wanted to, and in case there was a dust storm or something else going on, they could remain in orbit or rendezvous with a base on Phobos or Deimos as I suggested in the previous episode. No aero braking would be required, and if you got extra fuel from Phobos or Deimos, you would have extra fuel for a controlled landing on the surface, much like the original promotional video that we're watching right now. In my opinion, nuclear thermal propulsion can make scenes like this become a reality much more quickly and much more safely than using chemical propulsion as we're trying to do at the moment. So what's the problem? Well, in 1963, both the United States and the Soviet Union and quite a number of other countries signed a test ban against testing nuclear weapons in outer space amongst a lot of other places. And this has prevented the testing of nuclear thermal engines outside of the atmosphere. Now, I'm totally against nuclear weapons in space, but engines using low-yield uranium cannot be weaponized. And also another problem is the Atomic Energy Commission. Would they allow a private company like SpaceX to have a nuclear reactor or a whole bunch of them on the thousand starships necessary to set up a colony? Probably not without NASA collaboration. But come on, we live in a world where Iran and North Korea have nuclear reactors. Why not SpaceX? If this truly is NASA's goal, then SpaceX is most likely to achieve it first, or at least have the vessel that's most likely to get there first, and to have the ability to set up a sustained human presence on the Red Planet long before NASA is capable of doing so. 
That being the case, NASA should give SpaceX access to the most advanced propulsion system available, a system that shortens the transit time by half or allows the Starship to enter a safe orbit so it can make a safe landing. On top of that, it runs on the most common element in the universe, hydrogen, which is easily accessible from water, which is also incredibly common throughout the solar system. Why wouldn't NASA provide this to SpaceX? I hope that they do. And if they do, it should be quickly, because if NASA intended to build the Copernicus B by 2017 and send it to Mars, that means that they must be close to ready when it comes to this propulsion. So when they first test their engines in 2024, which is what the current schedule is, they should be ready very shortly thereafter. So for the last couple of episodes, I really haven't been that angry. I haven't lived up to my name and I have not gotten pissed off, but I'm going to make up for it now. I'm extremely pissed because we've had this technology, this advanced form of propulsion at our disposal for almost half a century. It's insane. Why was this never put into practice? Why did we not introduce some sort of exception to the Nuclear Weapons in Space Treaty that would allow us to use this type of propulsion? Because if we had done what we were planning to do way back in the 1970s, we would already be established on Mars by now for quite some time. And as you saw in the video, we had yet another plan to go to Mars using nuclear thermal propulsion over 10 years ago. And once again, it was canceled. Time and again, we have turned away from this far more advanced and far more efficient form of propulsion just for the sake of using what works. This absurdly conservative approach to transportation through space that we simply have to abandon. Now, chemical rockets are always going to serve their purpose. They're always going to be necessary in order to escape the gravity of whatever planet we launch from. But after that, nuclear thermal propulsion and then whatever generations of alternate forms of propulsion that may come after it need to be what takes over at that point. We have to stop using this antiquated form of getting around the solar system that frankly has been outdated not only for half a century, but really the same technology that was used to propel rockets way back in the Middle Ages. It's absolutely ridiculous. We need to stop it, and we need to stop it now. And not only that, NASA also has to authorize SpaceX to utilize this form of propulsion for the Starship as well. Hmm, I'm so angry, I'm having a hard time saying propulsion. But in any event, until we are ready to move forward, to finally step out of the cradle and stop using this ancient form of technology, Oh, and by the way, until we get to 40,000 subscribers and I am able to blast this coffee cup off the face of the earth, because frankly, I would rather drink coffee out of just about anything else. I urge all of you to stay angry about space. <laughs> <laughs>